Am I in the frame? Am I in the butt? Am I in the green screen? Here we go. Cringe. That's my second middle name. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. And today we're talking about drum and bass. One of my favorite genres, one of my absolutely favorite genres that I like to sort of dip my toe into as a tourist, as like, like it's a hot tub and I'm like, ooh, is this hot enough? Basically, I love it. I don't really know a ton about it. And so um, I wanted to do a video about the history of drum and bass in order to sort of pull you in to uh, let you know that also I released an album of drum and bass music called Heart Sing. I made it in Berlin over seven days um, at Superbooth and I made it exclusively on I made it pretty much exclusively on, minus some mixing, the Dirty Wave Mate, this little friend right here. What is this friend you're asking? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is a tracker. It's an older, but still really viable way of making music that involves sort of a downward moving cursor over a bunch of events. Um, you put note events in, you put an instrument in for each step, and um, then some like effects like sliding and arpeggios or like, you can put automation in for like, you know, all of your like filters and stuff. It's a really fun way of making music that has been used for a lot of music. A lot of video game music was made on trackers from the early days. A lot of drum and bass was made on trackers. It's just, it's a really robust and fun way of making music. This was my friend at Superbooth. I uh, took it with me and I took it on the train, started tracks on the train, started tracks on the plane, started tracks waiting at the airport. And then over the course of the uh, week that I was at Superbooth, I kind of went back and iterated and iterated and until I had a seven track album and that's what's out today. Oh, and hey, by the way, if you go to Bandcamp and buy the album, uh, you will get the bundles for this, the mate bundles, which is basically all the session files, everything that uh, made the song the song. So you can put them on your mate, hit play, the song will play. And uh, then you can like look at it. You can like say, hey, what do you do here? Uh, what's this sound? And then you can be like, oh, cool. Oh, I could like remix this or I could use these sounds in my own thing. I did this for my last album called Rituals that I did on The Mate and people really, really appreciated it. So uh, I'm doing it again. Go check the link in the video description for my new album, Heart Sing. Um, it was named after the sample at the end of the last track. Um, and also just because being in Berlin for Superbooth really, really made my heart sing. It was a very nice experience. And thank you to everybody that was there and, uh, you know, interacted with me. It was fantastic. I love you. Before we get to the history of drum and bass, let me just tell you real quick what my sort of relationship with this genre is. Um, I love it to death, um, I, but I'm not really like super in into the nuances of it. I got into it when I was a kid um, around the time that the US was getting sort of this like electronica explosion coming over from Europe. And so we had things like Massive Attack and Prodigy and Bjork and all this really, really amazing music that I just like love to death. In that group of music, somehow I came across this album, a little album known as New Forms from Ronnie Size and Represent. And this album blew my mind. It's a double CD. It is a drum and bass Bible. I love it so much. Um, it really blew my mind. It had all of the sort of like dark jazzy coolness that, uh, that trip hop did. Uh, like Massive Attack and, and Tricky, but it had these really fast, interesting beats that reminded me a little bit of like Square Pusher and Aphex Twin, but it was chill. Over here, it was like And my ADHD kid brain was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And over here, it was like And then on top, a chick would be like it was great. I love it. I got into that and then I uh, found Goldie, LTJ Bookham, Diesel Boy later. And then I kind of stopped listening to drum and bass for a long time um, until, uh, you know, I met a friend through my Discord. This guy named Whirl, he's a producer and software designer and he's really into it. And so we talked a lot about drum and bass. He would send me some tracks that he was working on and send me links to tracks that he thought were interesting and checked back in. I was like, whoa, this genre has gone through a lot of stuff. And then I looked at Ishker's guide for electronic music and I was like, wow, look at all these subgenres of drum and bass that I don't know shit about. I was like, let's figure out what happened. What happened with this genre? Where'd it come from? How'd it start? How'd it do? What'd it do? Why? And that's where we are today. Come with me. I'm gonna press a button here on my time machine and we're gonna go back to the UK in the late 80s in the rave scene. Here we go, transition. Whoa, this is 
This is the 80s UK rave scene. Late 80s UK rave scene. Let's just soak it in for a second. Whoa, whoa, that's okay. So people are making rave music. They're making all this rave music. They start experimenting, right? They start experimenting with different tempos and different beats. And then some of them are like, what if we put hip hop beats sped up in our tracks, these break beats? And they started doing that. And then hardcore, this genre hardcore, they were like playing the records even faster than they were meant to be. And, and they were like pitching them up at the same time because that's how like vinyl works, right? You have to like spin it faster and it goes up and pitch. So sort of getting this like pitched up kind of breakbeat feel um, to the rave music at the time. So if you're looking for an example of this like breakbeat hardcore stuff, uh, you could look at like the Prodigy's experience, a guy called Gerald's anything, and like LTJ Bookham's uh, Demon's theme which is pretty fucking cool, honestly. So rave music starting to experiment with breakbeats and uh, hardcore starts to experiment with, maybe we're gonna sample some really cheesy stuff into here, like Sesame Street. And um, they did, and some people really, really liked it. And then that sort of took off and became happy hardcore. Like with 99% of the evolution of electronic music subgenres, you have a uh, event and a reaction to that event, an opposite reaction to that event. So while happy hardcore was starting to develop, some people were like, no, chief, this, this, ain't, this ain't it. And they started making dark core. <laughs> So they got these chalked up funk break beats, weird noises. If you want to hear some examples of early dark core, you could check out Goldie's Terminator, Doc Scott's Here Come the Drums. So at this point, people weren't really calling it jungle or drum and bass, though the jungle word was starting to work its way in, kind of referring it to as like jungle techno or hardcore jungle. We'll get to why the word jungle uh, was incorporated in in the first place uh, later on in the video. It wasn't until like 1993 that we got the first release that actually said drum and bass in the title and that was the dark side hardcore drum and bass style from react records so one of the interesting things that happened uh, during this time was the sounds of these darker sort of more aggressive beats and, and bass lines and stuff started getting over to the jamaican and dancehall community who were like into dub and the sound system culture stuff like that and they kind of took a shining to it and there started to be this cool melding of the jungle sounds and this reggae toasting, Jamaican toasting thing, and the dub bass lines and dub delays, and a lot of that culture just started mingling. It's a huge part of the original jungle sound, absolutely huge. And it still persists to this day as part of the culture of the music. But on top of all that, jungle uh, at the time, we're calling it jungle, was pulling from everything. They were pulling from R&B, they were pulling from soul, funk, techno, house, um, while all kind of mixing it together into this brand new thing. And I think that's one of the reasons I took to the genre so much because it had the elements of all these different electronic music genres with a really, really unique, cool breakbeat sound that I just love to death. So with that said, what the hell is a breakbeat? Like we've been saying the word breakbeat a whole bunch. What's a breakbeat? So imagine a funk song. Imagine a soul song, R&B song, it's doing its thing having a little good time, everyone's having a good time. And then the band stops playing full music, like maybe they'll do a hit now and then, but uh, really they, they stop playing and they take a break and the drummer gets a little bit of time to stretch out. The band gives the drummer some a little bit. Get a drum song. You know what I mean? And the drummer gets to like keep time and everything. They're not gonna do like a full on crazy solo, but they're gonna add a little bit more stank to what they're doing. So like that's gonna go on for like eight, 16 bars or something. People who sample don't really need that much. Like a bar is usually enough. So that's what a break beat is as far as I understand it. And the hip hop DJs, they already kind of knew the power of break beats because they would be like DJing and they would notice that when they played the break part of the record, break dancers would go crazy and scratch people would have more time to like kind of stretch out, do their scratching. People at the party would kind of go a little bit more nuts. So they started looping the break part of the track and people would rap over it. Now you may be asking yourself, do I know any break beats? And you definitely do. I promise you do. You've probably heard one of these. So let's go through some of the most famous break beats that you can find in jungle music. First one, James Brown, Cold Sweat. Next up, Ike Turner, Funky Mule. Next up, James Brown, Funky Drummer. 
incredible bongo band. Apache. Lynn Collins, think about it. And finally, possibly, the mother, the father, the godfather, the godmother of all breakbeats. It is the Winston's Amen Brother. So producers, they got these old school samplers or old school computer trackers like the Akai S950 or the Atari ST with a tracker program on it. And they're getting these samples and getting a loop of the sample and they are like, I want to use this break, this is cool as shit, but the break's at like 100 BPM and my track's at like 165 to like 170 BPM. That's a big difference. So what do you do? How do you get that beat to fit up at that tempo and also get that really cool sort of chopped feel that a lot of jungle has when it comes to its breakbeats. Well, there's two things that can happen. One of them is you can load a slice of that beat on a pad on your sampler or a zone of your sampler. Um, so like a piece of it, uh, you can like choose one hit or maybe you can choose the first eighth note and you can assign it to a thing. So it'll be like, right? And then you can play that at a faster tempo. You can also rearrange it. You also might find, because you've got these rhythmic pieces, these little slices have a little bit of rhythm built into them, that you need to uh, speed it up somehow to get it to fit to the new tempo. And back in the day, they didn't really have any choice except to pitch it up. So to get it to play faster, they would pitch it up. And that's where a lot of the breakbeat sound comes from from these records, is the fact that the breaks were pitched up to match the tempo that Jungle and Drum and Bass actually goes at. The more you know. Since we're talking about cool little technical tidbits. Uh, another one that I, I heard was that the Akai S950, well, it had this test tone on it, like a sine wave, and that test tone became the iconic sub bass sound that you hear in early jungle stuff. It was used to turn it into this sort of like boom, da, boom, da, boom, boom, da, boom, almost 808 kind of sub bass kick sound that is just iconic in, in the genre. Um, so people were just like, taking advantage of every little bit that they had in these early pieces of technology. And I am, I am so here for it. It's so cool. So if you wanted to make like an early 90s jungle track, uh, you would grab that amen break and you would slice it up, maybe pitch it up a little bit, get yourself a sine wave, maybe make it 12 bit instead of like 16 or 24 bit, give it a little tiny bit of raunch, and then maybe give it a little pitch drop so it turns into like a sort of like 808 sound, sequence that in a sort of reggae bass line, then put an atmospheric pad over it and maybe pitch that pad down a fifth, like every eight bars and back up again, and then put a little vocal sample on it or something. Congratulations, you have yourself an early 90s atmospheric jungle track. It's that easy, it still sounds fresh as fuck. I love it, you love it too. <sighs> So we have jungle firmly established as a genre by the mid 90s. It's starting to go mainstream actually. And we also have drum and bass popping up as a name. But what's the difference between the two? Where do the names come from? Is there a distinction these days between jungle and drum and bass? So the word jungle can be traced back to Jamaican and Caribbean toasting in the 1970s. Uh, toasters or, or sort of rappers, MCs, they would make references to like the jungle or junglists. And there's sort of a split as to like what they might be referring to, but generally it's thought that like they were referring to maybe Kingston and it was referred to as the concrete jungle. So it was kind of like, you know, refer to the city kind of thing. But there was also a place called the gardens that was like kind of verdant and it was kind of referred to as the jungle. So it's probably like a reference to sort of a local thing there, like a, a way of being um, in the space that was there and sort of how it shaped people. All right, but what about drum and bass? Where'd that come from? Well, again, we got to go back to reggae and dub culture of the 70s. So you had reggae records, which, you know, like sounds like a reggae band, someone singing on top. We got the full band and everything like that. And then over here, we got the dub versions of the reggae tracks. These are going to be like stripped down a bit more to their bare components, you know, maybe like drums and bass. And on top, maybe they'll have like some bits of the original track. Uh, sometimes they'll run through like trippy effects, like the dub delay, which uh, is a just iconic iconic sound. In case you haven't figured it out yet, drum and bass owe a ton to Jamaican and African culture. 
Uh, it's just like we wouldn't be here without it. It wouldn't sound anywhere near the same without it. Uh, the sound system influence on the music was absolutely huge. And it was music of the disenfranchised. It was music of the urban disenfranchised. And I think that that's something that if we have these like wonderful fun tracks from like the PS1 era of video games and stuff like that that are making a resurgence. It's important to remember the roots of the music. It also makes me feel like a bit of a tourist when I'm making it, um, which you know, is not bad, but you do have to like remember to show respect to its origins. So I got on a tangent, drum and bass, where'd that word come from? Uh, you have jungle over here that has got all of this uh, raga influence and um, it's kind of blowing up. And then you have some people that are making that stuff in, in that vein. They got the Amen break, they've got the bass lines maybe, but on top of it, they're not using the raga elements. They're doing other things. And so they kind of felt like maybe they would need a, a different name for it. And so they went for drum and bass. Yeah, it's like 99% of all subgenres is just sort of like, we want to be different from you and we need a new name for it. <laughs> so if you're trying to like figure out if a track is jungle or drum and bass, you're going to have a hard time unless you set up your own set of rules because apparently no one can agree on what the rules are. So some people say that jungle was like the early stuff up until like the mid to late nineties or something like that. And then drum and bass kind of took over. Other people say that jungle is the more breakbeat and raga focused stuff where drum and bass isn't. And then some people say that the terms are completely interchangeable, that like jungle is drum and bass and drum and bass is jungle. If you want my take on it, I think that if you're going to have two completely separate subgenre names, they should have some kind of sonic distinction to them. I wouldn't just say, oh, that's drum and bass and that's jungle. If I'm going to write a jungle track, it's going to be heavy emphasis on chopped breaks as opposed to like individual drum hits, synthesized drum hits, sample drum hits. And it's going to be primarily breakbeats, chopped, uh, sort of juggled between different breakbeats. It's going to have that 808 sub sound and it's going to possibly have a minimal amount of stuff on top of it. Maybe a pad, uh, maybe a vocal sample, certainly any kind of like Jamaican or Raga toasting will immediately put it into that. And then drum and bass uh, for me is like a more like modernized version of it. It's gonna have like more individualized drum hits. Um, it might have little tiny bits of breaks to add the little like interstitial rhythms like the but it's gonna also have like a little bit more ability to stretch out into the other types of production subgenres that we're about to go over. And with that said, let us do a drum and bass subgenre speed run because some of these, I had heard what they were. I didn't know what they were. Uh, I had heard of them and I had to look it up. So uh, if you wanna check out what these sound like, go down to the link in the description and check out Ishker's music guide for electronic music. Uh, really, really well done with examples of the different subgenres and genres that you might've heard about, but you don't know what they sound like. So with that said, here are a bunch of drum and bass subgenres. Autonomic sound, lush synths, electro influences, minimal beats, sambas. It's Brazilian drum and bass. It's like samba plus drum and bass. I thought that was pretty obvious. We already went over what dark core was. It's the precursor to jungle and drum and bass. You know it. Halftime. Bear with me. Think about this. Take a track. It's a drum and bass track. It's 165, 170 BPM. Take that. Math it. Do a divide by two. That's halftime. Intelligent drum and bass. Definitely one of my favorite subgenres of drum and bass. It's inspired by Detroit Techno and UK House. It's got good breaks. It's got warm bass. It's got cool synth sounds. Intelligent drum and bass is my jam. Liquid drum and bass. A lot of you are probably most familiar with this if you've been on the internet at all in the last year or so. This is the stuff that's kind of blowing up again right now. In fact, there's a really, really famous little mem that, uh, that involves liquid drum and bass. I bet you've seen it. It's warm, it's jazzy, got road samples. It's, it's really, really feels good. It's a blanket, it's vibes. Liquid drum and bass is probably the most famous drum and bass, I would think. Neurofunk. You are animals. Okay, this is where things get kind of nasty. It's gonna be dark, it's gonna be tech sounding, like really like sort of aggressive, but like really, really contained and dark. The sound design is off the charts. This is my favorite uh, subgenre of drum and bass for sound design specifically. The bass sounds are just really, really, really cool. Shares some similarities with like sort of some of the uh, hyper growls of, of dubstep. It's, it's great. I really, really love the forward thinkingness of Neurofunk. Tech step. Okay, so. Remember how I said that drum and bass went sort of mainstream in the 90s? Well, as a reaction to that, some producers were like, you know what, fuck this mainstream sound. Let's go dark, weird, nastier, alien sort of sounding. And they went, tech step. They started using respaces, which is something I haven't mentioned yet. This is what a respace sounds like. Jump up. 
These are like just like drop based dance floor destroyers. The like just sonic weapons, like alongside like any other drop based music. Uh, think Pendulum, you know, like it's just like over the top dance floor fucking bangers. Hey, it's editing, Jeremy. There's so many subgenres of drum and bass that I haven't talked about, but I did completely forget to mention one of the big ones, and that is breakcore. Uh, breakcore is sort of the outsider's take on drum and bass. It's really over the top drum edits, abstract electronics. Think Square Pusher, Jega, Aphex Twin, Kid 606, Phoenician Snares, just like the most ridiculous, over the top, stuttery, crazy shit. Um, yeah, breakcore. It's important. Honestly, it's it's pretty important. All right, so that's the last one for now. Um, we never know what's going to happen. Like a lot of electronic music genres that have been around for a really long time, drum and bass will continue to innovate, continue to grow, react to itself positively or negatively. If you want to hear what the modern sort of like landscape of drum and bass maybe is, head on over to Beatport and listen to their top 100. You can listen through with these uh, genres that we've just gone through in mind and hear what tracks sort of adhere to like maybe one subgenre and then listen for the ones that mix. On the album Heart Sing that I just finished up, I mixed a lot of stuff because while I set out to make that sort of like PS1 era liquid drum and bass that I love so much that is so easy to listen to, it's just really hard for me not to want to pull from different parts of the genre because it just sounds so good. It's so fun. Um, go check out the modern sort of landscape. When you find a subgenre that you like, you know, go over to your streaming service and type in that uh, subgenre and find some user playlists that are going to give you a wonderful sense of what's going on in that subgenre. Drum and bass and jungle, again, one of my favorite genres in the entire world. So much diversity, so much energy, so much history. All the original sort of like genres that came out of like Germany and the UK that have like kept growing with us are, are so interesting to go in and research. And I plan on doing more videos like this if you want them. Ah, fuck you, I plan on doing them anyways. Uh, because I wanna educate myself. I know so much more about this genre now than I did before I even made the album. So yeah, I hope this was good for you. Uh, check the links in the video description for my new seven track album, Heart Sing, drum and bass for your ears, maybe even a little jungle. Who the hell knows? I don't, <laughs> I should, but I don't. <laughs> Remember that if you have a mate, you will get a link when you download the Bandcamp one to get the bundles for this that you could throw onto your mate or your mate headless. I'd like to give a special heartfelt thank you to Tim of Dirty Wave, the person behind the mate, for one, creating the device and to basically sponsoring my trip to Berlin. I wouldn't have been there without you and this album would not have gotten made without you. So thank you so much, Tim. Thank you so much to Dirty Wave. Thank you so much to everyone that made Jungle and Drum and Bass that I listened to that made me love the genre. Thank you for watching. Thank you to my patrons. I love you. I am your dirty, dirty I want you to put your in me. I'll do anything for you. I will your I will suck on your You know, in my I'm I'm here for you. That's all from me today. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day.